from Gainder, I joined the army and after a, a wonderful time in the army, I, I was discharged into Townsville where I met this wonderful lady. We got married and we had a, a blended family. In fact, it was if, uh, hers, mine and ours. If, and uh, we were a wonderful time. We joined a local church where you know, um, we were very involved in the children's ministry. And while we were in that church, uh, there was some friends that were fostering. And, uh, and as our children, the last of our children were starting to uh, hit their mid-teens, we were wondering about our life and we decided that fostering would be a wonderful thing for us to do as well. I had um, children in my life from when I was in, in uh, late teens, early, not about 19, and uh, it was one of the things I really enjoyed. And as our children grew up, we noticed that um, you, you, we could uh, sow, into their sow into their life and, um, and, and watch the seed grow and, and uh, you know, turn into um, you know productive and, and wonderful um, community members, and I think we thought we could do that um, with children that were in need. Since Neil has become a foster carer, he has provided care to more than 130 children and young people. Some of those placements have been very short term, so overnight emergency type placements, and children have been returned to parents very quickly. Some of the other placements that Neil has had have been longer term. One of the real success stories that we've had with Neil has been a sibling group of children who were placed with him and needed to be returned to family and Neil took an active role in upskilling those children, so teaching them how to make lunches and prepare themselves for school and a whole range of daily activities so that those children could safely return home. Nearly all the children ever been in our care always wanted to go home to mum and dad and for them to happen in a safe and nurturing way is all the thanks I ever need. They couldn't have had better foster care parents. Dad was so loving and so caring and you know he he got them all into sports and some kind of activity whether it was football for the boys or dancing with the girls or cheerleading. It was hectic. You, you know we, we still had me and my sister at home plus grandchildren now and plus probably minimum of four foster kids. Dinner times were chaos, getting ready for school was chaos. Sometimes in the morning you went to three or four different schools which started to get classed as the school run as opposed to just one school drop off. But mum and dad still managed to spread their love amongst us all. We have uh, what we call a family dinner quite regularly and, and my daughters and my, my son and my son-in-laws all invite their friends to that. Because of the, the way society is today with um, you know, the grandparents aren't close to, in living in the same towns, a lot of those friends have, uh, have uh, um, used, you know, like have used the experience of myself and my wife to, 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 um, to be a grandfather figure and grandparent, grandparent figure to those children and, and to encourage the parents. Uh, a number of years ago, our, our situation changed. My wife got diagnosed with uh, uh, cervical cancer she had already been diagnosed with uh, kidney disease, and over the next uh, six, seven years, uh, it has been one huge battle for her to um, to survive and and to have a, a life that has meaning and and purpose in it. Even this year, in in, in Easter, after an operation um, to, that was to uh, improve her quality of life, uh, there were such huge complications that we were called in and uh, told that my wife might die and, and we had to deal with that as a, as a family and as fosterers. By the grace of God and some wonderful uh, medical people, um, yeah, she, she survived and, and, and has a, a quality life now. Our family are taking care of us a lot now. They're, they're doing the things that, that what we've sown into them over the years has bear full fruit and in an in unexpected place into our lives. If I did get uh, the award as, as far as the year, I certainly in my life know men that have um, probably been more deserving than I ever would be. But when you step back and have a look, it's really an honour for your family to have thought enough that you've done enough um, into their lives and into their children's lives and into the lives of others that uh, they would you know, take the time and, and, and go through the process. It's just something you do, it's just who you are. It's who I am, it's, who, it's what my father and the male 
role models in my life, my uncles, you know, grandfather, have sown into my life, I, I've just been lucky enough and, and in a position enough and with a family that's um, you know, willing to take the ride with me.